Hi, you've clicked onto the Tropical Tibbet for May 26th, 2015, and the tropics are getting active early this year. Uh, the season doesn't officially start until June 1st, uh, but we're already watching the potential for subtropical or tropical formation of a disturbance northeast of the Bahamas, and this situation is something that is rather common. If you're going to get an early season development, it is usually going to be a system of this type. What we have right here on water vapor imagery is a large-scale trough uh, over the Bahamas and the Western Caribbean, which you can see there, the cyclonic flow, and this has become stuck in the region for the last few days. And what this trough does is on the eastern side, forces divergence aloft and convection over a large area. That convection over the past couple of days has begun to form a surface circulation to the northeast of the Bahamas. You can see a little convective burst associated with it there, and if we zoom in on a visible satellite imagery, you'll see that even better. We have this large-scale southerly flow aloft in the cirrus clouds, but you can see, if you try to pick it out, a little bit of rotation in the lower levels here. So there is a surface low, and you can see some convection firing next to it this evening, uh, beginning to move westward slowly underneath the trough. And this is normally how you get subtropical development off the southeast coast in the early season. You get a big, broad upper trough to come down. It will form a surface flow beneath the eastern flank of that trough, but then the low-level flow takes over and drags the surface flow westward out from underneath the flanking jet and underneath the trough axis itself. And this is a region where the wind shear is a little bit lower than it is over here where it is right now. So eventually it's going to move into this area of lower shear, and that's when we'll start watching to see if it can make some kind of a tropical transition. Now these situations are always rather complex, and there are a lot of things going on. Uh, there are a couple things to note right now. One is that it is still heavily sheared, as you can see out of the south. So all this convection is being pushed away, and you cannot get real development with this kind of shear, 30 to 40 knots. However, uh, we do see that the circulation it does have is a rather tight-looking structure. And uh, sometimes this is not the case, where the low is rather spread out and broad with a radius of maximum winds hundreds of miles away. In this particular case, the low is rather tight and compact. This is good for the system if it gets into an area of lower shear off to the west here and spins away over warm water and uh, accrues convection over time. That can allow quicker development than if the system was uh, very large and lopsided. As it stands, it has great structure if it gets into a more favorable environment. However, as it does move west here, although it doesn't counter lower shear, that's a plus, uh, it does encounter a couple of negative things as well. One is that it will lose the large-scale support that this trough in the upper levels provides. All of this convection has been fired largely due to this upper trough, and as soon as this moves west under the trough axis, it will be relying solely on oceanic uh, processes and heat fluxes to generate convection um, with its own circulation. The trough will no longer be aiding that. Uh, in addition, we have all this dry air that you can see in orange and black here uh, near the back side of the trough. And as the system moves west, and if it begins to strengthen a little bit, it will be able to entrain some of this dry air in its environment. And so this may prevent it uh, from intensifying too quickly, which sometimes happens as it nears the coast. However, one more thing to talk about is that uh, the sea surface temperatures en route toward the southeastern U.S. Um, are changing very rapidly. The storm is about here right now, and as it moves west-northwest, it will encounter first some cooler water, and then this warm tongue, albeit thin, associated with the Gulf Stream. And this warm tongue of water, if the system is moving slowly and moves over it, can provide a quick burst uh, to the system and allow quicker development just off the coast. We saw this with a tropical storm, Ana, last year. This was That was another early season storm forming in May. The Gulf Stream aided Ana's development as well, and this is the kind of situation one has to watch for with a system coming toward the U.S. coast, is that this Gulf Stream has the warmest water and can allow quicker development just before landfall. Um, also, you have the cooler shelf water just beyond the Gulf Stream, so if the system is moving particularly slowly, it can get a boost from the Gulf Stream and then weaken again as it moves over the shelf water. Um, but this can still be a problem as it moves toward the shore if the Gulf Stream gives it a boost. Now the question is, will this actually develop? Well, we do have some model support uh, for this. The h wharf a couple of runs now showing a bona fide tropical storm of moderate strength moving toward the South Carolina coast um, early on Sunday. And we have the European model showing the same kind of thing, but slower somewhere around Monday morning. And uh, the track of this is in general going to be toward the northwest, but then as a new long wave trough comes in to the eastern U.S., um, it's going to eventually try to turn this thing 
off toward the north and northeast, and that turn is usually associated with a slowing of the storm's forward motion. And so we may see the storm slow down just as it's nearing the coast, and uh, that will have a lot of uh, complications with it. One is uh, the period of time and the length of coastline uh, that will be affected by the adverse weather, but also where it slows down, whether that's over the warmer Gulf Stream or over the cooler shelf water, may determine how much this uh, system can develop prior to actually moving onshore. And right now it does appear, based on the model track forecast, that this will be moving ashore at some point in time. Exactly when is a little bit uncertain. Uh, the time frame is anywhere from late Saturday to Monday in some of these model forecasts. But it looks like in about two to three days it will certainly be uh, within uh, a close distance of the shore and be affecting shipping at the very least, and some rain and gusty winds are likely to affect the coastline over the weekend. Regardless of whether this actually develops into a tropical system, weather is likely to be somewhat lousy in the area. Um, as for whether this will become a bona fide threat, it has the potential to, and it's difficult to say uh, with certainty whether it will actually develop until it gets out from underneath this area of strong wind shear and we can see whether it can survive on its own without the large-scale support of the trough. Right now the National Hurricane Center has a 70% uh, chance of this eventually developing into a subtropical or fully tropical storm and thus interests in the southeastern U.S. should be monitoring the situation as this storm moves toward the area rather slowly over the next couple of days. We have some time to watch this and it will likely not be developing very quickly during the next day or so, um, but we may see it try to wind up as it moves over the warm Gulf Stream just off the Carolina coastline. So with that, uh, that's it for today. Thanks for watching.